Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we'll be doing Zalgo against Chaos King. And in today's video, we have a special guest. Introduce yourself, Corin O'Keefe. What is up everyone? Corin O'Keefe, back yet again and for the first time, I'm on my good pal Karimis' channel, and this will also be on my channel. So back yet again, how you folks doing? Thanks for having me here, Karimis. No problem, Corin. So for that, in this video, we'll be doing Chaos King against Zalgo. I'll be covering the Zalgo portion at the start of the video. Of the video. Corin will be going over the Chaos King portion, and then we'll go into more of an in-depth analysis together with both characters. With that, let's get underway. Starting off, Zago is a meme of a creepypasta. This is allowing him to surpass the entirety of the creepypasta wiki, as he has stated several times. He's able to corrupt everything in the wiki, and several other aspects of creepypastas are just emanations of himself. Using this, yes, we can just upscale him from what the actual wiki itself scales to. Inside the creepypasta wiki, we know that directly that there are alternate dimensions, up to 11D, a billion dimensional, quadrillion dimensional, and even infinite dimensional. We also know from Slenderman himself that, that dimensions exist on any possible axis, being from X, Y, Z all the way up. This would also imply infinite dimensional. More from Slenderman, we know that Slenderman is not bound by dimensions, and in fact, in the creepypasta files, is stated to be a platonic concept. This would very much imply that Slenderman himself is an outerversal being. This is important because compared to someone like Jeff the Killer, who is stated to be an animation of Dalgo, Jeff has surpassed the wiki several times over in a mini narrative. These mini narratives would then be out and be outerversal layers that would stack higher and higher. But Zalgo is higher than any number of these outerversal layers can stack. Him being beyond it in a way that they cannot be stacked would make him high outerversal. This would be the peak of Zalgo's power, and it's the power that he'd have over the entire wiki. With that being said, let's move on to Chaos King. So starting off with Chaos King, I'll get right down to business. So as we know, the Chaos King and his totality is a rival and a threat to multi-eternity of the seven cosmos. Now let's go ahead and work our way up in the ranks until we reach the totality of eternity. So for starters, we have the infinite amount of multiverses within deep space all of these multiverses in their totality are all high hyperversal structures, infinite dimensional. We take it a step further. We have the crossroads of infinity, which all of these multiverses are within. Now the crossroads of infinity and its totality is stated on multiple occasions to be distantless, timeless, the meaning of time and distance are literally meaningless there. And it's beyond the totality of these infinite multiverses that are all, are all high 1B. So with that, we can easily say the crossroads of infinity and its totality is an outerversal structure. Now we take it a step further. Another realm that's above the crossroads would be something known as the macroverse. Now, the, macro, the macroverse is interesting because it's actually implied in itself to have an infinite amount of dream transcendences within itself. So infinite layered hierarchy within this macroverse that, that's already above the crossroads of infinity. Or another way to look at the macroverse, you could just say its totality views everything beneath it, such as the crossroads, as a dream. So at the very least, 
it would be one dream transcendence above the crossroads or in itself an infinite amount of layered hierarchies in itself. So now we take it a step further. We go, we go to some of the realms of the abstracts and where their embodies hang out still realms within the totality of eternity mind you i'm talking about something known as the dimension of manifestation and over space now now the dimension of manifestation in itself contains levels of hierarchies an infinite amount of levels in itself now this is impressive because if we look at the embody of the in-betweener, even his embody on one level is the concept of concepts. And as mentioned, there's an infinite amount of levels in reality, uncountably infinite to be precise. And each one of these in-betweener in embodies would be that much greater than the previous. So you have an infinite amount of outer versal hierarchies within this dimension of manifestation, st stacking all the way up before we even reach other realms and true forms. So this in itself can easily be seen as outer versal plus or even high outer versal as this realm, this realm would technically be abstract or conceptual in comparison to everything beneath it. So then we reach a realm known as the neutral zone. Now the, neut the neutral zone in itself contains predatory concepts and primordial essence and it's completely beyond as in conceptually beyond everything below it below it so at the very least this realm if you go with the outer plus range for the other realms below it that i mentioned then this in itself would be high outer versal or if you go with the the high outer versal range for the dimension of manifestation slash over space then the neutral zone would be conceptually beyond high outer versal hierarchies and then we get to the totality of eternity now the iterations of eternity they exist in a realm known as the outside or the land of couldn't be, shouldn't be, a boundless realm, a boundless structure, conceptually beyond everything within eternity. Eternity himself and his full existence exists in this natural boundless realm. And his true self would be conceptual in comparison to everything contained within inside of himself. So the Chaos King is a threat and a big rival to the seventh cosmos, aka the seventh eternity, the iteration. He can devour him, and he is the void that defines him, the void, the void that predates creation itself so with that out of the way i'll hand the mic back over to karimbus and let him give some thought yeah clearly from what you've just said it's very clear that on a low end the neutral zone would be the sort of level where zalgo would be at and on like more of a high end you would only need like the dimension of manifestations and you'd already encompass everything zalgo was so with Chaos King, Chaos King scaling much higher, extremely higher in AP, it'd be very clear that 
Zalco doesn't stand as much as a chance as we'd hope. With that being said, though, it could be some unique abilities or perhaps styles of combat that Zalgo might use. So to make it to make it more interesting with this, since Chaos King has clearly got a power advantage, let's talk about what if their powers were more relative to one another? What would happen then? So, considering Chaos King would normally have the power advantage, Corin, what do you think would be like like the first thing Chaos King would try and do on like Zalgo, like in character sort of thing? What would he do? Well, through the Chaos War run, Chaos King did showcase possession and corruption, such as when he possessed the, the God of Sky and Thunder, known as Zeus. So, would Zalgo have anything against him being possessed and pretty much turned into a herald, so to speak, of the Chaos King? So that's very interesting. So, normally... With Zalgo, he's the one going around corrupting other people. That's that's how he spreads himself through the entire creepypasta like cosmology. He corrupts them, their story, and brings himself further. That's how he's like the meme of creepypastas, because he's the source of where all this creepiness comes from. But no one's actually tried to corrupt him himself. I would assume, considering considering his experience and consistency though, they should have resistance of that corruption he sh- and considering what was said earlier with slender man of how he's like a platonic concept and with how jeff the killer can have narratives below him he probably has it on a conceptual and a, and a narrative level so on the alternative aspect would chaos king be able to resist it if zalgo tried it on him Oh, yes, that is a very interesting question. And I would say it would more than likely be the case. He could resist it as characters such as Hell Lords, who are also representations, actual conceptual entities of certain laws and aspects of reality in themselves have possession and corruption. And they got absolutely embarrassed by even an avatar of the Chaos King. Nothing they had was effective whatsoever on on even an avatar of the Chaos King. So I would say it is likely that corruption or even possession really wouldn't have much effect on Chaos King either at the end of the day. Ooh. So neither one can seem to use their corruption on one another. Uh... Another ability Zalgo likes to use is a sense of tormenting, like mind games. He does this to people who normally have a resistance to it. Uh, how do you think uh, Chaos King would fare when these sort of abilities are used on him? Well, again, if we look back at characters like Mephisto, Satan, within Marvel, Lucifer... All the other Hell Lords, like Dream, the Fear Lords, these kind of guys, as mentioned, they're conceptual. They have they have possession, corruption, and yet they were unaffected on even an avatar of the totality of the Chaos King. So with that, I would say it's easy to say that his totality would be even more layered into that. So even if, let's say, for example, you could bypass, like, the first layer that he's resisting as an avatar, then his totality is an even greater layer above even that. So I would say he would be okay. That's a really interesting point there. So we have the Hell Lords in Marvel showcasing similar abilities and being absolutely hopeless against the Chaos King. So Zalgo using these abilities don't seem to be the best option for him. Also, I believe Chaos King has some unique abilities of his own. Do you think there's something else he can use? He can use. Of course, one of his abilities, another one that comes to mind, you could say, would be his natural existence, so to speak. You see, he's a 
conceptual void. He's the opposite of what eternity is. Eternity is the concept, the concept of everything. So the chaos king would be conceptual nothingness. So just him interacting with something in itself, he would have natural conceptual void properties, conceptual non-existence itself. So would would Zalgo have any thing to defend himself against that? From my experience of Zalgo, I would actually say he wouldn't. Normally with his abilities, he needs someone to use them on, a physical thing to attach it to, or a mental state. He exists himself as a meme, meme so that's a unique existence of his own, but that doesn't grant him any inherent resistance to this void. So, it looks like the void of, that is the Chaos King, would, also, would still be able to surpass anything Zalgo would do on a more fundamental level. With that being said, do you think there's a chance for Zalgo? Because it's clear that the Chaos King's got options. Like, do you think there's something that Chaos King might be weak to, or there's some, like, ploy that could be done to give him an advantage? Well, honestly, there's no inherent weakness that comes to mind. But we do know when Hercules, towards the end of the fight with Chaos King, we know due to the plot, the Chaos King was essentially sealed away. Sealed away. So you could make an argument that sealing could potentially be an option. Although I don't see it coming to that more often than not necessarily. I'd agree with that. I wouldn't think that Zalgo would be one of those characters to resort to, to sealing. I don't believe he's ever done it. And uh, when it comes to what Zalgo normally likes to do, he likes to take things and make them his possessions. So he can, like, feed off them. But if he can't feed off Chaos King, and Chaos King exists more fundamentally in him, I doubt he'd be able to seal him either. It looks over that in normal power-to-power, power, even with the high universal power that is Zalgo, Chaos King has the advantage. And it also looks like, when we break it down to just who's got better abilities, it seems that Chaos King has more fundamentality with his abilities and better experience with characters who are similar to Zalgo. Would you say Zalgo is better fitted as sort of like a Hell Lord than a rival for like the Chaos King? Yes, that's actually an intriguing question. I would say Zalgo would be along those lines in himself which isn't too bad give or take and as we pointed out in the analysis he would be comparable to like the dimension of manifestation if we go with the high outer scaling for it or if we lowball the neutral zone he would be comparable to that which are still within something that the chaos king is threatening to devour casually Yeah, so Zalgo, being incredibly powerful, wouldn't be able to defeat the Chaos King at full power, nor would he be able to affect him with his abilities. The winner of this would be the Chaos King? More often than not, I would say. Yeah. Yep. There are other versions of these characters we could look at. For example, Chaos King gets stronger later on, later on when he absorbs 98% of eternity. Or we could even look at Oblivion, the full scope of the Void. And Z Zalgo has crossovers with other series. We could try a composite Zalgo. We can see what that'd be like in a future video. I'd say... Thank you all, everyone, for watching. Corin, any last words you want to give to people? Simply that. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this 
awesome collab for what it actually was. Hope y'all have a blessed day. Corno Peep out. Peace.